What's up? I'm Systemis, and this is going to be the project walkthrough for Exist off the Accelerate EP. And this project did give me a lot of trouble, honestly. Uh, I remember having so much like tuning issues with the lead synth, and as well as when I went to do the final render, I had to take like a pre master and then take it to a new project file to do the final master because I was having so many issues. I'd like do special EQ cuts um, to like get the sound locked in like you can already see all the EQs in here there's even more in the other project file um so if I have time to record all that I'll open up the other project file and show like the final mastering edits I made and what issues I was having but we'll get there when we get there um so let's get right into it let's look at the structure of the track so I actually have this track start with a bell synth like just a singular bell synth just some, like Dragon's Gamble started uh, I kind of wanted some duality between the two tracks because they are on the same EP. Um, as well as like, I had every track starting with a drum intro and then I scaled back Dragon's Gamble, which used to have a drum intro. It then had an ambient intro, just a synth. And I thought, um, you know, if Froggy and Boundary Numb both have drum intros, why not have two synth intros and two drum intros? Just like break it up a little bit. So. I cut out the drum intro from Exist and we, I went with just the bell intro. And it sounds like this. There's playing, yeah, it's playing. And then it goes into the body of the track, the first section of the actual like dance part. I wanted the section to progress. I want it to be like the standard progression, like progressive track. So it starts out kind of minimal and then it goes into the next section and the drums increase as well as like we get a bunch more synth layers added. As well as that vocal shot you just heard. And then it keeps progressing, more synths, more layers. And then in the breakdown, uh, everything gets verbed out. And it's actually a six bar breakdown, which is a little bit interesting. Usually it would be four or eight. Um, the reason why is because after this um, verb section right here, I want to switch the bell rhythm into this pattern which is um, the same basic melody of the first half, but a totally different groove. And I didn't want to um, do four bars of it, but I didn't want to go into it abruptly. I want at least a little, a little flash of the upcoming melody and like the riff change. So I thought two bars was the perfect amount. So it's a four bar breakdown and then two bars of like leading into the drop. That you get like a acclimated to the new rhythm and then it drops in with a new bass line you can see my cpu is pretty upset it's, uh, it is redlining um this project that's something else that gave me a lot of problems is at the end of this production i really put a lot in this project it's really cpu um intense it's hard on my machine. So if I encounter problems, I'll just reset the project and then start filming again. Uh, Cause I don't want to like record the tutorial while I'm like crackling and having underrun and underrun problems. Uh, so we'll see how far we can get before it starts crackling and just totally breaking. Uh, but as far as structure goes, it keeps, uh, you know, it keeps progressing, adding the same elements as in the first half of the track, just with the new bell rhythm and the new bass rhythm. Outro, a bar outro. I want to have a long outro so it really mix well in a nightclub setting. You know, eight bars is a minute. You have a long time to mix in the next track. You can do a really slow mix. I think it'd sound really smooth and it'd be nice. Um, but that's pretty much the structure. Nothing crazy. I just went for a standard progressive structure where like things escalate, more layers are added, break down, then it restarts, and then 
from the beginning and then more layers are added once again so just basic progressive structure i just wanted dark techie track i didn't want um i didn't want to really have like big drops i wanted to like just keep a dark vibe throughout the whole thing and do like a progressive type dark track instead of like a melodic progressive track um so that's pretty much the structure and let's go into the sound design and with my other tutorial i started doing um top to bottom i think it's a lot easier to do for me than as opposed to like looking around the project for like what what i made first like i know i made the bell sound first but um you know, I don't want to get into that right now. We'll just start with the drums and work our way down. So let's get into it. So the drums in this project um, are not that intricate as compared to other projects on the EP. Um, it wasn't really the focus of this track to have really intricate uh, percussion. I just wanted something to carry the dark techie vibe I was going for. So I'll play the drums and I'll go into what the sounds are. redlining there so the basic like identity of the drum loop other than the kick hat clap which is like pretty standard stuff um i have this loop which i cut which is very very clicky but i thought it sounded cool to have just four of them especially with the kick playing off of each other So I thought that was nice, and then I also added this loop on top. It's a very short loop, but I chopped it up, and I thought it worked really well with the other loop that I already just cut in. I think it sounds really cool together, especially with the kick. It's, you know, it's something interesting. It's not a loop that you've heard a million times before. It's not like uh, a structure of percussion that's been done by everybody. So you always wanna add into your track some drums that aren't standard, aren't in the standard rhythm. Um, the last loop down here is from this. But I actually put a gross beat on it, um, which is making just the cymbal hit from it. It's just that psh, and that's getting a blood overdrive as well to make the symbol like super overpowering. So, um, have that, and then we also have a reverse clap. Pretty simple stuff. Just I just cut out the end of the transient because it's a little bit too much. So it's just the uh, the high end of it. I don't want the transient. Uh, and that's pretty much the basis of the percussion. Like another hi hat gets added. And then over here we add this uh, like clicky loop, which sits really far in the back. You can barely even hear it. And then there's also this loop, which gets slowly added in over time. Um, like the the low pass filter totally has it filtered out, and then by the end of the section, it's a lot more open. Uh, but the, even those two loop layers aren't like super present in the mix. Like if I play everything. Like you can almost like barely tell they're there just because I wanted them to barely be adding to the track. I just wanted a little bit of extra texture there just to like thicken it up without um, making it like too sonically like a mud wall. And that's all the drums in the track. There's really not a lot of percussion in here. Um, just kept it really simple. Like I said earlier, I just wanted to keep a vibe going. I didn't want to like go crazy on the percussion. So uh, let's go to the next sound, which is the bass. Let's find the base as a pattern five. And let's solo it. Turn off the side chain. That's causing a lot of underruns. I actually hit a hundred CPU. But um, like I said, this project was really at its limit, so we'll see how much I can actually film for the tutorial. Um, pretty much this is a very simple single oscillator uh, bass sound, it has 15 voices, 50% detuned to try to give it that Reese feel. And in the effects, it's like 
literally nothing. It's just distortion. It's literally just a distorted 15 voice saw. Super simple. And I went for uh, to try to copy what the hi-hats were doing up here with the four hits and then nothing, four hits and nothing. I made the LFO to do three hits and then nothing, three hits and nothing. As well as every one is higher than, every one is higher than the last one. So it's like three hits and each one is bigger than last and then stop. Three hits bigger than last and stop. I thought it was a kind of cool pattern. And then um, for the ferric, always throw it on. Always. Every bass should have this. Um, the EQ, I wanted to boost the like 800 to 1700, just like that upper mids. Like it could use a little bit of presence there. And then a Maximus, um, because I have a 16 voice bass, it's going to be very wide. So this is just to make sure that my mids or my subs are forced mono. As well as when you have 16 voices, the variation is rather high because you have voices and that means that you're going to have randomization on your phase. So you need to make sure that you're not having like a ton of variance in your volume. So I put a hard, a hard ceiling to make sure no matter where it hit in the phase or like in the envelope, it's always going to be the same volume. So that's what I was doing here with the ceiling. Pretty interesting stuff. Usually the base envelope doesn't look like that, but um, this one did because I'm using because it has so many voices. So for the second half of the track, uh, I have a different base pattern. Um, well, it's the same pattern technically, it's the same MIDI, but it's a different serum. It's just a different envelope. It's a one eighth dot, and this is the rhythm that it goes. It's the exact same patch in every way. It's just that it has a one eighth dot rhythm instead of the you know four on the floor rhythm with the three hit stop, three hit stop. This is one eighth dot, and it's doing like an initial hit before spiking back up to a bigger hit. So that's the only change that I have here is that the um, in the second half of the track, the rhythm on the bass changes. Other than that, the sound design is completely the same. So yeah, the bass is pretty simple in this track. Uh, let's keep moving along. I think next is going to be the main synth sound, the main idea of the track, which is um, actually consolidated. So let's dive into this. So the main synth in Exist um, is this sound right here, pattern 12. Um, let me solo this. Did not kind of play. Oh, it's right here. So this is really hard on my CP, CPU, so it might be a lot of crackling when I describe this sound. But um, pretty much, I was having a lot of issues with like the tone of the sound, and I had to um, consolidate it and like retune it and consolidate it and retune it and consolidate it try to like get it to the proper pitch the structure of the sound let me find the original um is this it three yeah this is the original synth i rendered it from so this is a patch called music box uh, i got it from my homie Cosmos, he's a super good dubstep producer. Um, we, we share presets between each other that we make. Um, so he sent me this one a long time ago. And it replicates a music box. It's super cool. I can't make it any louder. Maybe I can. It's pretty much a sign, like a sign replication. You could do this probably with a sign. However, he's doing it with a symbol loop so it's a noise oscillator with forced uh, resonance to f pick frequencies out to make it replicate a music box um the problem with this with this is that it's really hard to get it pitched correctly you can see my pitch wheel right here is plus 28 and then minus 2 <laughs> which is a really weird uh really weird 
pitch um changed but it's the only way i could get it in key or like what at least sounded in key and this isn't even final like i did more tuning um and the tuning re-rendering tuning re-rendering like to really try to get it in key this is really the big hurdle of this project was getting this main synth sound in key i tried scrapping it i tried choosing a different synth that i could just automatically get in key but every time i kept going back to the music box preset every time i was like you know this really this feels like it needs this sound i was so used to having the sound in the project i didn't like the project without the sound I felt like i was missing something so i really forced myself to sit down and say look i have to get this in tune i have to get this working i have to have this track workers never gonna they're gonna be happy with it so i did end up getting it in tune and I had to re uh, consolidate it. I consolidated it with the sidechain on. Um, so I did a lot of EQ work in this project. That was really the, ha the hassle was like making the bell cut through, but not having it overpower the mix or be too sharp on the ears. So a lot of hassle was really like trying to get this bell to fit in the mix. And get it EQ'd properly. So first thing I did, obviously, was sound visor. I need to boost this sound up because it was very quiet, like I showed you on the original patch. Uh, we did a Maximus as well. This is just to control the uh, the high end. I feel like it was the high end was way too um, it was way too stereo. So I want to pull the high end back and make it a little bit more mono because it, it was like just it was too spread out in the highs. And then it's a lot of EQ EQ work. Just little adjustments, adjustments, some very small adjustment there, um, very small adjustment here, like micro adjustments, just like very, very fine tuning it. Uh, and then a little more at the end, another Maximus. Um, I'm not sure why I used the other Maximus for, it might have been like I tried something with it, but I ended up not using it, um, which happens a lot. Have you seen in other tutorials? I have project, I have VSTs laying around that just don't do anything. I, I should just delete it, but um, just for the sake of history, I'll leave it in here. Um, at one point I was going to do something with this, I decided not to. Um, so it's just a ton of EQ work on that to try to get it, um, try to get it fixed pretty much. But I did get it dialed in, I got the pitch correct, and I rendered it out. And I did, I do have a gross beat on this, I forget where the gross beat is routed. Synth plus? Where's the gross beat? I don't remember where the gross beat was, but um, it does make it glitch here um I, i'm pretty sure i remember what it was i think i had i was playing the actual pattern pattern seven here because the gross beat is on this channel it, i'm pretty sure it's this right here yeah this is a little re-trigger window right here so i had i had the this pattern playing it and i consolidated out and so the glitch carried over and the envelope is left over i don't need the envelope uh, i also don't need the verb effects so that's also it's also built into the actual consolidation. Um, if you're coming from if you're coming from Ableton, if you're an Ableton producer watching this, consolidation is the exact same as freezing. So basically, I froze this sound with the glitch in, so I didn't need the envelopes. I just didn't delete the envelopes. So um, that's pretty much it. It's a music box preset for my homie, and I consolidated it and tried really hard to get the pitch correct, and then just did a whole bunch of EQing to get it sounding nice. And in the second half, it's the exact same deal, except it is uh, a different rhythm. I forget which pattern I use for it though. Let me take a look. I think it's this one. Yeah, this is the pattern I use for the second half of the track. And it's having a lot of wonders. I can hear my computer fans turning on, like it is not enjoying this at all. Um, so that that's basically it. it's the exact same sound, same processing. I just had it had just had the pattern change the second half of the track. So yeah, that's pretty much the bell sound. It gave me so much like it looks simple, but it gave me so much problems in producing this track. I've never had so many pitch issues before, like wanting to just quit and not quit music, quit this project, like just abandon it and say, you know, I'll just make a different song. But I didn't want to give up on this project because I liked it. So it's forced myself to get the pitch correct and, um, you know, force it to work. 
Um, so that's pretty much that, and we can move on to some other sounds in the project. So skipping the drum sounds that I had, um, one other sound here, pattern six. I'll solo this. We'll play that. Oh, it's not soloed. It's just a little, uh, little lo-fi noise sound. Um, it's coming from a serum. It's not a sample. It's part of the noise oscillator. It's AirCan three. Uh, just pitched it down thirty nine percent, and I didn't do any effects to it. I just EQ'd it a little bit uh, to get fit the track. It's just a little. It's a little like air shot that happens. I thought it was kind of cool sound, and it fit. Uh, it fit in the track well. Like if I play everything, you can hear it. Yeah, well, you can hear it if it wasn't for all the underruns. But I mean, there's no helping that. The CPU is just like under too much stress in this project. Um, so the next sound is his voice sample, and we'll solo that. See what that sounds like. So the original sample, it's saying every time I uh, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> um, it basically, it's saying. Every time I, every time I, and then there's more vocals to it. I didn't want those. I was I cut them out. So it says every time I, um, it doesn't mean anything. I just wanted a vocal element in the track, something that you couldn't really understand what I was saying. And I thought that was, I thought this worked. Thought it was cool. I also had a lot of pitch issues with these things. Um, ended up going minus. Was that minus three there? And then this one is minus. Three or four? I think this one's minus four, or was it minus three? I think it's, I think they're both minus three. Let's see. Yeah, they're both minus three. Uh, getting this style then was also a hassle because it's kind of like I would adjust the bell, and then I would adjust the voice, and then I would change the bell. The bell was right, and then the voice would need to be changed, and the bell doesn't match the voice, and the bell needs to be changed. It's like these two things, as well as this synth down here, which um I'll talk about in a second. The, the, the trinity of these three sounds getting the same pitch was such an issue for me. I'm not sure why, um, but like every time I adjusted the bell, I'd have to adjust the pitch on the this synth and these vocals. So really, like it was three. I was getting attacked from three fronts. It was really terrible. Every time I, one was in key, the other two were off key. It was just so much work. Like all of the project, all the time spent in the project was just pitching these three sounds. Uh, let's take a look at the processing. So I get an EQ. This is to cut out all the lows and all the highs. I want it to be very lo-fi. Uh, black hole, of course. Serum effects. So this gives it a chorus, a hyperdimension, and some delay. Without the chorus, it has a totally different sound. It sounds too clean. I want something way darker. I think the chorus adds that like off pitch sound the detuned sound like not the wrong key it's just detuned so uh the detuned sound makes it sound a little spooky if it's that dark tech vibe i wanted and then another eq uh which is just like a gain because it was too quiet i didn't want to do the same thing as last time if you watch my tutorial you can have you can drop a gain knob in but my gain knob is buggy i didn't want to in an already like heavy project i didn't want to drop another heavy plugin so i decided to uh use a parametric to uh gain it like through the eq and then sidechain and all of these synths so if anything is here 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 it's all getting routed into this this is a 200 to 400 synth cut every uh, like all the frequencies from 200 to 400 are being reduced in gain like the gain is being reduced it's not a cut it's like a volume decrease because those are the core frequencies of the bell. I absolutely didn't want any phasing. With how hard I worked to get this bell sound, I wanted to make sure there is no competition in the mix from anything else. So I just made a bus. All these synths all get the 200, 400 cut. Um, just so that there's no, I don't have to worry about when I'm mixing later, like conflicting with the bell because the bells need to be front and center. So yeah, everything gets the 200, 400 cut. Um, the other synth is this, which you probably can already guess it. 
Vengeance sample. Woohoo. Um, yeah, it's just a little vengeance sample. I thought it sounded cool. I pitched it way down. Uh, and I reversed it. It was like a synth shot. I made it more of a sweep. And I remember that like this was a misclick. It's supposed to be one of them. Like if I mute one of them. It's supposed to just be one. But I double clicked and I put two of them. And I was like, wait a second, this is sick. Like I'll I'll keep doing it. It's almost like someone honked a train like bah, bah. Uh so it, it, I like it. That's probably my favorite sound in the track. Is that little like train train horn. I even named it Train in the Mixer. Uh, and this just got an EQ cut out lows and highs, same as the voice, and the black hole for the reverb. So everything is kind of getting the low cut and the high cut out of it to make room for the bass, make room for the bell, and then make room for the hi-hats to be really bright as like the only bright element. I think you have a way darker sounding track if you only let the cymbals be your highs. Um, that's something that I tend to do is I take the highs out of tracks. I don't like the high end like already. But then when you purposely cut it to give it that darker vibe, it's just super effective. If you just let just the cymbals be the only highs in the track. Also make your drums brighter. Um, so those are the extra synth sounds. Uh, I think we also have... No, there's no other sound there. Okay, we'll move on to the next synth that we have, next layer. So the next sound in the project is this um, effects right here. We'll play this. So pretty much I wanted it to be, and you know, keeping the theme with the other sounds of my track, I want it to be no lows, no highs, just mid. And um, I didn't want to have a super long tail. Um, so what I do is I glitch it with this gross beat. Um, it's just a preset, it's one of the timing windows that they offer. So you can hear it start to glitch. And then the tail like ends abruptly, so it's just the reverb carried over, which you don't really hear. So it sounds like it ends right on this beat. Um, it is a cool little effect that happens halfway through the first half of the drums. So it only happens a couple times in the track, and you can hear it in like re like with relevance to everything. Kind of has the like the play of like the bells glitch and then the synth or like not it's not synth it's like the fx glitches so it's like d a double glitch two in a row um, so they kind of like line up with each other and then let's see the next sound that we have is pattern nine okay pattern nine so pattern nine is pretty much exactly the bass patch except um single voice and is 16 voices it's also a seventh, and the envelope was a little bit different, but it's playing the same envelope as the bass, and it's just to give the bass a little bit of support, like it sounds a little bit different. Let me see if I can solo the, the bass and the synth. Oh, it's getting a lot of underruns. You can kind of hear like that extra tone from the seventh underneath. It's just a basic saw, but it's just to kind of fatten up the bass a little bit. As the track is progressing through, I want the sounds to keep stacking. So I thought I'd stack a, another synth uh, following the rhythm of the bass, a seventh, and then that can like just add more texture and depth to the track as it progresses. So nothing crazy there. Really simple sound design. It's just another saw stack basically. Uh, the next sound is this growl. Let's take a look at this. Hello this. So that's pattern 11, so we'll look at this uh, serum. So this is a pretty basic FM bass. I mean, like, we've all heard what FM basses sound like, right? It's nothing crazy. Um, nothing that's a crazy technique at least. It's just a simple FM bass. I have a spectral, I think it's spectral, right? Yeah, spectral being FM from a saw because you never know FM sounds best when it's from a basic wavetable. Um, so there's a little bit of FM, you have a sub oscillator, basic hyperdimension, tube distortion, like a little EQ boost, a high is a little bit, nothing crazy. And then a comb filter to make it sound cool. 
uh, really super simple sound design. And then the EQ is again cutting out all the highs and all the lows. This is the kind of the theme of this track. There's no highs and no lows. I want everything to be super mid heavy, make it dark. Um, so it's just sound I added kind of late in the project. Everything is kind of structured, and I thought, you know, what would be cool if I had like an FM wob in here. So I just went in after the fact and added in this FM wob. Um, but it sounds it sounds nice when it drops in with everything. Like I'll unmute everything. You know, it's not your standard effects sound. Like you're not your standard sweep or a sweep or like reverse or whatever it's called. Down down sweep, whatever. I don't know. Like people come with new names for stuff. What I mean is. You know, it's nice to make a sound myself and not have to just use a sample there. And I thought it sounded kind of cool. It sounds kind of creepy, kind of like some kind of alien screechy sound. So I liked it. I thought I threw it in and, you know, thought it made the track a little bit better. Um, So let's talk about this synth next. Okay, so the next synth in this project is the bane of my existence is again. Like, there's so many things in this project that just went so poorly for me. Oh, this must be muted. Um, so we'll solo this synth, and what pattern is this? We'll take a look at this, pattern 12. Let's look at this. So pretty much just plays that pattern. It's just three notes, nothing crazy. Um, this is barely tune lead. I use this in a lot of my projects um, with different tunings. Um, it's a sound I made. I didn't make it for a particular project, it just is a sound that I have in my preset storage. And if you look at the tuning, like this is minus 32, minus 39, minus 7, plus 9. Like the, the tuning on this is super, super wonky, but it makes for a really cool synth sound. So I really, really like this synth. Uh, I like to use it a lot. Um, for the effects, we have the hyperdimension, uh, just a little bit of the mix of the unison. Uh, the hard clip distortion um some eq boosting the highs and then a chorus is on of course and some reverb and some delay uh really the basic sound is just it's a four voice saw and a two voice saw but this is plus three that's plus one and it's being fm'd from this saw so like this saw has a weird pitching and it's fming into a saw with also weird pitching and somehow together like i couldn't tell you what my what my rationale was when i made this preset but I just know that it works and it's in key. So it's cool. It's a cool little preset. But uh, I don't know if, if this is also replicatable. You probably could like just, you know, pause the video and copy this. But I don't know if it sounds exactly the same. Like it's really wonky. I don't know what's going on in here, honestly. Like why it sounds good with these pitchings. It's just like those magical presets you make accidentally. Uh, where is this going? So this is this full row of processing going into all this processing. So it actually has uh, like the ma over the maximum effects you're allowed to have in for a sound in FL. Uh, that's a trick if you ever want to use more effect slots, you say if they, this is enough for you, route it into a bus and then you have you know all these more effect slots. You can keep doing that bus after bus after bus and keep doubling your effect slots. Um, so pretty much the reason for this in a track was like it was a synth to carry into the breakdown because they didn't have one of those i didn't want to have just an abrupt breakdown i didn't want the bells to go into the breakdown so i want this synth this synth to come in to carry us into the breakdown You can hear the tone of it still. It's still there in the background, just very reverbed out. And that was something that I have here, the envelope, this purple envelope. So let me just go through the envelopes. We have, um, this is the cutoff. So it's the cutoff of the pluck. This is the side chain envelope, which I slowly ramp it off. Usually I do a hard stop on the side chain when I get to a breakdown, but this time I wanted to keep, I kind of want to keep the pumping as I went through. It sounded sound a little bit smoother. So I actually had the side chain continue and slope off as the um, breakdown started. And we have black hole, and we have some glitching down here from a ghost beat. A sound guidizer gets activated just during the glitch, because during the glitch is when the 
sound needed the boost. So just during a glitch, we have a sound geyser start. This is a volume automation because I wanted right after the glitch volume to do a hard cut. So it's a hard cut volume automation right after the glitch. This is another gross beat doing a second, um, a second glitch on it. So it's two gross beats into each other. Then have a blood overdrive. So as the breakdown continues, I want the distortion to ramp up. This is an EQ to then tame the blood overdrive. As the distortion ramps up, we then have to EQ it out. And then have a deep blue glitch, which ramps up at the same time as the gross beat and the sound geyser. So I have a deep blue, and let's see what the deep blue is actually doing. So the deep blue is the time stretch. I love that effect. Um, so the time stretch is enabled there. Then I have a maximus, which is a different um, different processing on the levels of the like low mids highs, which is just for the breakdown. Then I have a second deep blue glitch, which is the the mix of the deep blue. Um, so it's like this is the effect, and this is the mix of that envelope. I then have a sound geyser, a second one which is activated solely over the whole breakdown. Because as, as the breakdown goes on, the cutoff goes down. As the cutoff goes down, the volume goes down. So as the volume goes down, I need to increase the volume back up. I don't want the cutoff volume, I want the regular volume. So that's why I have the sound geyser ramp up as the cutoff ramps down. So that's all the envelopes quickly explained why I have, that I have on this sound and why this sound gave me so much trouble. But I had to work on all these envelopes and get everything to work smoothly. Because let me tell you, I was having a lot of problems on this sound. I was getting a lot of crackling, not even crackling from like my CPU being redlining. I was getting crackling from just the sound design of the sound for some reason. Everything I was trying to do with the glitching is getting a lot of popping and stuff. Uh, and when I rendered out for the second mix in the other project, this is the part, this is the section right here that I had all that I had to put all the work into. It was this section that needed way more automation right here. Um, but that's pretty much the sound. Um, and it does the exact same thing over here, just a little bit different automation clips. Uh, so yeah, it was very technical, this this sound, the breakdown, very particular. It might sound like just a basic reverb out synth, but it really isn't. It's, it's really uh, more complicated than that. Like it sounds, it sounds simple, but trust me, it, it's it's technical stuff. Um, and that voice you heard right there is this, which we'll talk about next. Texas to accelerate. So it's the same fruity voice that I used in Boundary Num. It says exist to accelerate, um, and that kind of ties the whole project together. Like exist is the name of the track and accelerate is the name of the EP and then exist to accelerate is kind of like um it's like an ideology of like why live if you're not going to go for it like um you know chase your dreams and or like sitting in your house all day not doing anything like you know go live life go accelerate your life um so exist to accelerate is kind of like just a phrase that I like um so I want to put in this track and also like tie my EP together so it has a bunch of different meanings Uh, and that is playing in, uh, where is that playing? To right here. So this is the Fruity Speech Synthesizer. And I, it was a uh, small child whispered, I think were the settings I use. So if you have Fruit FL Studio, open the Speech Synthesizer, go small child and put whispered. And that should be the setting. And I didn't need to do any processing on it. I just have it raw from the speech synthesizer. But that that makes like a nice... I also have a reverse noise. Nothing crazy there. Um, just a little white sweep to go into it. So it, it felt like a good spot to put it right there in the breakdown. And the voice breaks up the big reverb. Um, the lush reverb synth I created. So I can drop right back into the bell. So you can hear the transition there. It makes... And then it goes right into the next rhythm. So it's almost like the turning point in the track. It's like the track is accelerating as well. 
Uh, so I really like that. It's probably my favorite part of the track is when the the reverb washes out and then you get the the voice, the phrase, and it switches the switches the toll bell rhythm on you. Um, so that was that. And what's next? We got some FX and one more synth. We're almost done. So this is some pretty basic stuff. Like I don't have to go into detail. Like you've all seen effects before. It's a basic reverse crash. <laughs> symbol i didn't want to have like a regular um bright symbol so i have this different this darker symbol right here as a different tone to it because i pitch it down 12. so i, I took a regular symbol crash took it all the way down uh, which lowers the highs which again is keeping the theme of the track of no highs no lows everything in the mid um so that's like the, what the basic effects transition sounds like I like it. That's sounds pretty cool. Uh, we also have a boom, which happens uh, when the breakdown starts, a bass hit. It's just good to have for the club. And the last sound, oops, the last sound in the project is these bells right here. I gotta turn on this. They might be kind of quiet. I'll turn them up. So they're very broken, and I didn't want them to be like a shining element. I wanted them to be kind of underneath the reverb pad. So I'll open Project 20, Pattern 22. We can look at the sound design of it. I'm pretty sure it's a stock serum preset. So we'll check. Um, yeah, Velo Arm. So this preset comes with, with, um, with Serum, it's a stock preset. You go to Synth, it's in here right here, Synth Velo Harm. In my opinion, this is the best bell preset that I have in Serum. It's the stock one. Whenever I need a bell, I'll usually just go to Velo Harm. Um, it's just such a good envelope and like the tone of it, just everything about it is just so perfect. I love Velo Harm. So whenever I need a bell, I'll go to Velo Harm. And the processing is we have a deep blue glitch, which is stretching which is why it sounds broken because i have a little bit of a stretch like only 160 percent and two is the divisor um which you'll if you if you use glitch to glitch you'll understand what that means if not don't worry about it but um, i'm only using a little bit of the divisor so it's not crazy and then sound guidizer serum effects eq the gross beat which is uh wish wash which is why it sounds reversed so every it takes information from every four beats and then it reverses it on top of it so it like makes the that's why it's called wish wash the preset because like wish washing the sound you can hear it's like it's playing the regular hits and it's also playing some reverse hits so it's like the two the two are uh working together this sounds cool um and I also have the stereo image go super wide at the end. So this is stereo image envelope, and like you can see, it opens way up, um, which is zero is actually stereo, 100 is actually mono. So it goes to zero to open up the stereo image. I turn down the volume, and the reverb goes way up at the end as well. Uh, so that's the whole project of Exist. It really was a very technical project, and it was very complicated. It looks simple, this doesn't sound complicated, but like, the effort that went into this project was more than it's probably worth. I probably, I probably should have given up on it. A sane person would have, but I didn't. I refused to, and I'm glad I didn't because I really like the track. I can't wait to drop it in a club sometime. That's gonna be sick. So, um, let's look at the uh, buses, which is pretty much same as all my other projects. I have, you know, the Maximus to control the levels on everything. So just like. Adjusting the caps of like the mids. I want the mids capped a little bit here on the synths for the bass You know just forcing the low end to be mono capping it make sure it's all the same volume Capping the mids highs were fine for the drums. I have the transient plug-in just make the, the drums hit a little bit harder Maximus I didn't do any capping just a little bit on the highs for the drums standard stuff and then I have a global Maximus for all the buses 
which has more capping on the mids because the mids really the problem area that's why i have the 200 400 cut here like the mids are really the issue of this project um and then the highs a little bit stereo boost nothing crazy and the elevate uh the only thing i changed in the elevate settings for this project was i did 4.8 and it's not a lot um i increased the speed of it which is actually kind of a lot it's kind of a, a it's more than my other project. I have some that have zero. I have some at, a, at like, you know, exactly at like as fast as possible. And I have some slow as possible. But for this one, I just went with one millisecond. It felt right. Uh, and then for the drive, I actually do a little bit of drive here. It just didn't feel crunchy enough or like powerful enough when the mix was done. So I thought I'd do 0 0.2 dB of drive just to help a little bit, get a little bit of that crunch, a little bit of power back to the track. Um, so that's pretty much that. That's exist. And uh, let me see if I can open up the other project file where I did the edits. Then we'll see what's in there. So this is the uh, exist final tweaks project. This is the final thing I did. Um, and this was the first, the second master. Then I did a third master. It's also a first master. This made the fourth master. Um, so I have, I had these effects that I added in that got rendered into these versions. So I don't have this version anymore. It's rendered into this version. Um, but I had some, if we turn these on, I have some like gross beat, some Maximus stuff, some serum effects. And really the breakdown had so much popping and clicking. I was just trying to remove the clicking any way I could. So that's why I had all these insane like Maximuses and gross beats and stuff turning on and off because I was trying to control the clicking as well as the volume. Like you can see here, this is my volume envelope for the whole, for the final three, final three right here. I actually turned the volume up 17% at the end of the breakdown because the breakdown was so quiet in comparison to the rest of the track. I just didn't like it. So um, I'll just open up the two um, envelopes the two EQs and you can see like live what they do. I don't think this one does anything, but I'm pretty sure this one does something. So I'll just play it and you can see. And you see how this is moving to control the popping. And it kind of just stabilizes right there. And it continues on for the rest of the breakdown. So that was it. It just needed that little extra EQ. Um, and it as well needs some more glitching up here. But I don't have that file anymore because I overwrote it. Um, so yeah, that was, that was Exist. Uh, it is definitely the hardest track of the EP. Because of all the technical problems I was having, but, um, you know, I wouldn't do anything different. I'm really happy with how the track turned out. And if anything, let it be a testament to like, you know, don't give up on your projects. If you really believe in the track and you think it's good, you know, keep working on it and don't give up, um, trying to fix everything. Cause look, if I would have given up, it's, it's now released on Mousetrap, which is amazing. I mean, I love that label and, um, and I'm super stoked to have it out with them. So if I would abandoned the track, it would have not even been released ever. So don't doubt your projects, and if you're having problems, just keep working on it, and you can get through it. You know, you're in total control of your audio and your music. So if you don't like the way something sounds, just change it. And that's it.